you, you said about your group, and your group got it. Your group so got it. Mm -hmm. And this group just, I, I don't, there's just no way I can say this group gets it. Yeah. You know, and is that, so then ultimately comes the most important question. Okay, if they didn't get it, if it didn't feel right over the course of the season, then what do you do next? What are the steps that you have to take if you're Pete, if you're Jody, if you're John, if you're in a position of great leadership, what do you then have to do next? Next is you have to really look at this thing from the top down. I say this all the time. You have to look at this thing from the top down. And when you look at who's going to go forward <clears throat> with this football team, you got to make some hard decisions and saying, this person I like, this person I don't trust, this person I'm cool with. And whoever is coming on this train next season, it, I say this, it starts, it's going to start in the springtime. And what I need from everyone in this building, I need from everyone in this building, it starts with discipline. It, 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 and it starts with discipline from the sense of, if you don't do things my way, then you got to hit the road. It's, it's, there, there's, there's, there's no more wiggle room with what, with what you guys just said. There is absolutely no more wiggle room with the antics anymore. It, it cannot happen because we're, we're not that good to have antics and, and win championships, right? The locker room's not strong enough to have antics and win ball games. We're home right now. And so it starts with the discipline of this football team. That's where it takes, and that starts from the top. And I look at, I look at guys on this football team. Coach and Snyder have to be honest and say, I'm, I'm going to take this guy with me on this next journey. They got to make some really, really hard decisions when it comes to coaches and when it comes to players. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's just as real talk as I can get. Mm -hmm. That's just as real talk as so, I get. So, I mean, zero tolerance basically is what you're saying means, you know, Jamal, we start going through some of those incidents so and such and such from this year, right? The, the yikes and the DK stuff. So you're talking Jamal and you're talking DK. And we're talking Tariq. I mean, we're talking about a group of starters that at times this year seem to cross the line. Does that mean you go to them and say, hey, next time we're done? I mean, what do you no. do? If, I mean, like, what? how do you get – when DK Metcalf does something next year, what? You're going to cut him? I mean, like, it's just not as easy as that, right? I mean, like, it's, it's a little more complicated. No, so, so what you do is – if an incident happens, uh -huh. if something does happen with one of your guys, you don't let it blow over. You don't sweep it under the rug. You face it head on. Mm. Because when you face it head on with your stars, what do you think these young pups going to do? Oh, I don't, I don't, I, can't, I, I won't even think about doing that. That won't even cross my mind to do that. And so football, it's, it's uncomfortable. There's a lot of uncomfortable conversations that, that need to be had. There's a lot of uncomfortable calling guys out that needs to be had. But I swear to you, I promise you, that will make everyone in that building so much better. Building so much better. And I, It strikes me, KJ, and this just thought popped in my head, and you can tell me I'm, I'm dead wrong on this because I was not in that locker room and in that building and on the practice field like you were. But it struck me, and, and even back then I think I said this, you know, Pete is an amazing good cop. And he will take every arrow. I'm sure there's part of him that really didn't like that cigar smoking, but he's going to not ever point a finger. And he's going to take all mm -hmm. the blame. And he's going to cover for those guys. And when Earl flips him off and when Richard Byrne, you know, just torches earth, like it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The guy is just always going to have grace and have his players back. But during those years when you were there, there seemed to be a pretty bad cop. If there's a good cop, bad cop. If there was a, you know, I'll do all of that. There was a disciplinarian. How critical was Ken Norton in those years behind the scenes when he was a linebacker coach to kind of bark and command? Because the snapshots we saw on a practice field just struck me yep. that that guy kind of carried the force. If Pete did all of the grace, he was. That was everything, bro. That's what made the locker room work. That's what made the season work. You have got to have bad cops in that building. And that's all I'm saying. When I look at the antics that get done, the first person I'm looking at is a position coach. Who I, I wouldn't dare think do, to, to do certain things on, in the media, on the football field, because I know who I had to answer to come Monday morning. I wouldn't even think it. And when I look at, when I look at the guys from the top, then I'm looking at, 
why is your player doing this? Why why is he doing mm-hmm. this on a consistent basis? Mm-hmm. Players are a representation of their coaches. That is a fact. They are representation representation of their coaches. And um, even when Coach Hurt was um, a, the defensive line coach, he was that guy to stand up and like, dang, the the, the, the big dog is speaking. Let's we everybody better tighten up. And so, and I look and I just look at everyone on this team. Are there too many yes men? Are there too many good cops? That's 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 a real question. That that's not for me to answer. That's for for them to answer. Is there too many yes men? That's not getting their players to buy in it, to what needs to be done. It's interesting you guys bring that up. It's sort of reminiscent of another story kind of buzzing around the NFL right now. And I don't know if you've seen, have you seen that Dan, Danny Amendola quote about Brady and Belichick? We played for Tom. We we worked for Bill. We played for Tom. Yeah. And so in, in that case, it's sort of the opposite, right? Everyone knows that Belichick's the bad cop. But, hey, we had this really good cop that we wanted to play for in Tom Brady. Yeah. And, it, and it's amazing how... Pete and Bill's stories are just so intertwined between Pete getting run out of New England and Bill coming in to mm-hmm. follow him with the exact opposite philosophy and then meeting in the Super Bowl and now kind of going through some of this stuff at the same time. It's amazing the way those two guys have just been completely yeah. intertwined throughout their career. Mm-hmm. But it does strike me that just as Bill may have needed Tom's playfulness and fun and good cop, that Pete needs the exact opposite of that around. And that's probably true of leaders everywhere that whatever you are best at, you may want to have a number two who's exactly the opposite of exactly the opposite of that. Well, my personal experience, <laughs> KJ, you, you can good, add, like, just jump, jumping in, like, you know, Tony Dungy never swore. Tony Dungy never right. lost his school. Tony Dungy in two years, two years, raised his voice twice. And it was only because dudes were so selfish, punching one another and fighting. But you know what he had? He had some salty coordinators. <laughs> and Tom, Tom did not drop, you know, a sentence without a, a you know, profanity. Mm-hmm. And certainly Peyton had an edge and an intensity and held guys like firm and demanding because he was so demanding on himself. And guess what? He won 10 to 12 games every single guys, year. You know, you know what the magic word we're all looking for? <laughs> I got the word. We need balance it may sound cliche it may sound like a simple word but we need balance when it comes to this organization (laughs) let's just take it back to the glory days when you look at our defense we have loud rambunctious richard sherman Mm -hmm. you had a quiet cool kj Wright. (laughs) you had a a doug baldwin that would just veins pop out of his head all the time and you had an even kill jermaine curse you had a Mr. Positive, Coach Carroll, and you had a guy that would just scream down your throat at times, and Tom Cable. Yeah. We had that yin, you had that yang. That's all I'm asking. I was waiting to see who the opposite of Russell was going to be. I was going to see who the balance was. You got a Russell gonna... Wilson? <laughs> And Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh-huh, I was about to say uh-huh. something. I was about to say something really mean. Yeah, but I'm not. Gonna You're not say gonna it. do that. You've you've yeah. learned now that the, occasionally I'm you say things on the show and get it. you in trouble. <laughs> no, I think balance is a good word, and that balance might word. help with the inconsistency. It might help with the accountability. I mean, all of these. It might help with the identity problems because they have all of those issues yep. over the course of this season. Yep. So, no, I think those are really valuable comments you make, and KJ. So, and so this is the beauty of football. This is why I love this game so much this is why one you know i watch it each and every thursday saturday sunday this can be fixed Mm -hmm. there's no there's no problem that's too big for this organization it can be fixed yep now with that being said it has to get fixed 